Okay, let's go. Maseches Bovekame, Daf Kuf Hey Omud Aleph. We are now in Kuf Hey Omud Aleph, towards the bottom of the page. And the issue today, we continue the sugyas that have to do with half, 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 things that are incomplete, just like we spoke yesterday about a person who returned one half of an entire pruta. Does that help or not? And we said if the person returned half the pruta of an entire pruta, on one hand, he's clean of gneva because he has no uh, gzela, full shi'u of gzela, and he's then a pruta. The mitzvah of a shavit didn't do either. Why? Because he did not return a pruta. So the mitzvah of a shava was not fulfilled. It's as if he got rid of it. It's like having bris mila without having bris mila. The mitzvah wasn't actually uh, there without having bris mila, was born that way, without the mitzvah performed. Doma Rove, <coughs> says Rove. Oh, that's better. Doma Rove, Harei Omru, surely they said, Nozir Shigileach V'shir Shtei Sairos. This year is Lulu Nishmas of Yimur Menachem and Akiva. 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 Ben Yudis. There's a mitzvah for Nozir to be megaleach, to shave his entire head and look like a fresh watermelon. Why does he do that? That finishes off the Nazirus, and only after the Giluach, according to some opinions, only after he shaved his entire head, he has that only then he can drink wine and be metame lemesim, otherwise, no. Nazir was megaleach, shaved, but he left behind two hairs. We all said, we all know that two sires, two hairs are always considered as the shear, the important shear for hair for all purposes. As long as one has two hairs remaining left, that it's considered as if he has 2,000 hairs. I don't know how many hairs are in a human head, but um, many, I think, not mine, but you know, usually. Yeah, so it's an Israeli problem, you know. So Lamai says, as long as two hairs are left on his head, it's not considered that he shaved. Very nice. Boy, Robert. On the heels of that piece of information, continues Rava, Boi. Boi means he asks the question. Let's say the person came to shave two hairs, was completely bald, and only has left our two hairs. Now he's mekind, going to be mekind, the mitzvah with scissors, with a shaver, I don't know. He wants now to shave those two hairs. He shaved one and the other one fell. The other one fell by itself. Nashro, he just dropped, fell by itself naturally. What's the halacha? Is it considered that he is shaven? Is he kosher or not? Or maybe because he did not shave both of them, maybe that's not called that he shaved properly. asks Ravina, about Rava's question, and he's not asking a rhetorical question. Would Rava ask you a question about a Nozir that was Megaleach one hair after the other? Let's say one hair was Megaleach, and the next one would also be Megaleach, yeah, with, with, with a machine, manually. Would Rava also ask the question? Obviously not. You don't have to shave both hairs together. One, two, three, boom, two together. In other words, you shaved, and the fact that, and you came to shave what? Two hairs. You're about to be Mekayim the Mitzvah. The fact that one hair fell, that's called natural. It's part of the natural process of Giluach, that as you shave your hair, or as you cut your hair, sometimes there's a hair that just falls naturally. But says Rashi Nozir, what could you have done? You know, that that's called normal Giluach. I'm coming to shave two. I shaved one. The other one fell along more or less with it. That's good enough. Why being so nitpicking? No, no, no. Rav is not asking foolish questions, Khalila. Rav's question is, Tzricha is necessary. He was the opposite order. He came to shave two hairs. Yeah, he was completely bald, two hairs. Oh, he's about to shave. I don't know if he makes a bracha or not. I don't know. As he's about to attack the two hairs, one of them fell. And then he shaved one lonely hair. That is different. Why? Now that's a question. Me and Rinan, shall we say, now we explain both sides of, this, of the question. Shall we say, Me and Rinan, Hashtamiya Saleka Shiu or Sear, 
we can say like this, listen, at the end of the day, he has no hair. It's true that when he came to do the mitzvah, he sort of missed it. Why? The baby already has Mila. He already has the last hair, for the, the second to last, the penultimate hair already fell. So now, oh, he only has one hair to cut. Listen, at the end of the day, why being so this? At the end of the day, but the Eved, all his hair is gone. Leka shiu. Some say leka se'al. There's no hair anymore. It's completely bald. Yeah, it looks like a, I don't want to say neo-Nazi. Yeah, it's not a good example. It's a terrible example. It looks completely bald. Or maybe. Or maybe you can say no. It's not called proper giluach. The mitzvah of giluach wasn't really uh, uh, performed. Why? Originally, he left two hairs behind to be mekayim the mitzvah of giluach on two hairs, uh, yeah, because we said two hairs are choshuv and the mitzvah is performed on two. But look what happened. The hashtag gilach, but at the end of the day, when he really was megalach, lo havi beisayrus, there are no two hairs. All of a sudden, he's left with one before he managed to perform the mitzvah. So did he or didn't he do the mitzvah? Is he called megulach? Is he called that now he's properly shaven and can drink wine or not? Adal poshto. Then Rabbi himself answered his own question. And he said, Se'ar en kan, giloch en kan. We're playing, dancing in both weddings, as we say in Yiddish. Se'ar en kan, there's no hair, no hair whatsoever. Look, at the end of the day, it fell, ah, shaved, fell, came UFO and took it away. <laughs> at the end of the day, there's no hair. But giloch en kan, but there's also no shaving. Craig what do you mean? Se'ar en kan, giloch yesh kan. If you say there are no hairs, that means that there was giloch. Now, you know the answer already. And says the Gemara, like we said before, Hachikoma, that's a punchline, that's a Moscono. It's true that technically, physically, there is no hair left behind. That's true. Every baby can see, psh, the guy's absolutely smooth, no hair whatsoever. But mitzvah's giluach in kan. The mitzvah of giluach you did not perform. Since when you came to do the mitzvah, of the last two hairs, the other hair is Yistam. He shaved uh, for whatever reason, doesn't make a difference. The two last hairs came to be Megaleach, one fell. One fell, oh, if one fell at the end of the day, you're not Mekayim the mitzvah on the proper shear of two. You Mekayim it on one. Mm. Mitzvah on one, it's like eating half a kazais on Lelo Seder. You're not Mekayim the mitzvah of Giluach. And therefore what? And therefore says Tois first, according to some people says, Wow. According to those who say that Tiglachas is necessary in order to drink wine and go to Levaya, this guy cannot drink wine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He went through the entire process, but because that one hair fell, he did not do the mitzvah of Giluah. He did not perform the mitzvah. It, it happened by itself. But mitzvah, there is no mitzvah here, and therefore now that's it. The guy did not do the mitzvah. Oh, so I don't know. I was going to ask the question. Let's say it's going to regrow. I don't know if he needs noon or zero, or or he can just shave again. I don't know. I didn't learn other in many years, so I don't know if it can be easily, you know, uh, easy solution, let it grow, or we need a whole new process of nazir. I don't know. So I'm a little bit. Similar idea. That's the last of that series of half half stories. This uh, page Kufe is all about half half. So I'm a little bit. Allow me, please, to make the bracha. A little introduction, a little introduction before we start. We're going to talk here about Tuma Vitara. Doesn't mean you have to faint. Tuma Vitara is not as hard as you think. A person, let's say there's low lane, a dead person in the first floor of a building. And in the second floor of the building, there is a there is a hole. Yeah, hopefully fenced. Yeah. There's a hole or some crack in the wall, not in the wall, in the ceiling slash roof. Yeah between the two floors, okay? So parents has to go and inspect it. And now, you know what the, per the person did? The people did, they placed a kli. Instead, yeah, they want to do things, a uh, very bad job, a very bad job. Instead of uh, putting a proper plank, you know, they did, they put some, uh, image of some kind of uh, vessel, whichever one, and there was a hole in the vessel. Now, if the hole in the vessel is too big, yeah, then the tumor can go through. Let's say tefach, yeah? Let's say there's a tefach, the, 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 that kli itself has a hole, then the kli cannot protect the upstairs area from tumah. Okay. Let's say it was a chovis that was perforated, perforated in a shiur 
the amount, the hole, is big enough to let the tumor through. shmorim. Even if you cocked it, you stuffed it with shmorim. Shmorim are sediments, which are not a very stable thing, but it's properly cocked and closed. It's silua. Then the matzil, now the chavis is, you know, is already not receiving tuma and can also be a stopgap between the two floors. The chavis is now good to go. There's no tuma space going through. No, not true, not true, not true. Not true. Absolutely not. No, if a uh, mace is metame, what I learned in Mishnah Olos, I can't say Mumukhin to Mutara. I did learn Mishnah Solos not so long ago, or not, not recently. No, if you have proper, if you have the bottom floor and there's proper ceiling completely closed, completely sealed between the first floor and the second floor, and then the two will goes to the first floor, not the top one. Maybe there are exceptions, maybe Khumras, maybe Aloha today, I don't know, something from left field. I mean, yeah. Lighter. Okay, by Rove, now Rove is asking on the heels of that, Agaf Mahu, what's going to be if he closed properly, not with sediments? Let's say closed half the hole, what's going to be the halacha? What's the question? What do you mean? What's in other words, my question, my question is as follows. And I saw a lot of Rishonim and Achronim here. What I'm about to tell you is what I understood in general from the Mephorshim. The question is like this. If you have a hole that's, let's say, tefach big, let's say, and that lets the tumor through, then if I stuff, stuffed it and I, and I cocked it with a piece of wood, let's say, half a tefach, that should be okay. This is not a mitzvah. As the Rishonim said, it's not like nausea. You, you have to do two hairs to be mekayim. As long as technically I don't have tefach, it's fine, right? But it's not so simple. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. If you stuff the entire hole, that's it. There's no hole anymore. Even if the stuffing, say some of the Meforshim, I don't remember who says what, even if the stuffing, the caulking is weak, it's shmovim, sediments, but as long as they're somehow, you made them be um, stable and strong, that's good enough. However, if you have a hole and only half of it, or even three quarters of it is stuffed, but not the whole thing, then it's a question. How do you look at it? Do you say the new stuffing, the new material, is kilo completely absorbed and completely part of the chovis? And then what? That's it. Then I have less than a tefah. Or do we say, no, 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 no. I have a hole. Because the hole is not completely stuffed, I have a hole with some other material in it. But it's still all of a tefah. Is the feeling completely annulling, canceling the previous situation? Or we say, no, excuse me. If it's completely whole, we'll turn a blind eye. It's all the same. Not now, Bochum should know this came to me after a lot of, you know, uh, hopefully I'm saying the right thing. Says Why is that a question? It's a Mephorsha Mishnah. The same Mishnah, if you keep reading, will answer your question. That not. It says in the Mishnah there, Chavis Shanik, the same Mishnah that we saw before. A Chavis that was, was perforated and the perforation was too big, allowing the tumor to go through. There's a Smua Shmorim, and now you filled it in with Shmorim, with the sediments. It's Ilua. They saved the chavis, saved the day. The chavis is good. The chavis is fine. Because it's completely stuffed. Koko bizmoiro. Let's say you stuffed it with zmoiro. You took a piece of uh, wood, like a, a branch. You took wood, which is not the same material as the cheres. Then you filled it with zmoiro. Ad shimareach. In other words, imagine yourself. I don't think you even have to draw it. You have a hole. Yeah, you have a hole. And the hole is stuffed with here yeah, one of those. Uh, yeah, that's the hole. You stuff the entire hole with what? With a piece of wood. The piece of wood may fall. Yeah, and the piece of wood is not completely closing it all the way down. It's not sealed. You have to seal it from all sides. Yeah. In other words, the border between the filling and the actual chavis, you have to do what? Ad Yeah, you have to also be memareach. You have to like spread. Yeah, you have to, like you do silicon, right? You have to fill it on all sides to make sure that it's completely, completely closed without even one tiny hole. Ah, you already get the picture. Let's say instead of putting in the same hole, instead of putting one piece of wood, you put two, two little ones. Then you have to worry even more. 
then you have to, the whole circumference, yeah, the border between the hole and the two pieces of wood, you have to mimarech, stuff it and seal it. In the middle of the circle, you have the hole, the little uh, uh, cleft, whatever, between the little groove between the two pieces of wood. That too, you have to mimarech. Ooh, we get very, very uh, uh, strict over here. Taima, the mirach. It's only considered good because you stuffed it from all sides, the sides, the middle, every tiny hole. Like one wants to stuff his bathtub or, or to do a tomb, you know, on the ceiling, every millimeter, no water should come through. That is to say that if there was no miruach, let's say he left one millimeter open, then it's not good enough. Am I? Why isn't it good enough? Why is so kivyochol super machmir crazy to have every tiny bit stuffed? Why? It should be not worse than stuffing half of it. You have a question, stuffing half and leaving half empty? We see even one millimeter shouldn't leave empty, shouldn't leave uh, uh, perforated open. So you see for sure, you need to make sure that every tiny bit is, is uh, taken care of. So what's your question? It's a Mishnah that you have to strictly cover every, every molecule. And so the Gemara, no, Amri, they say, Hachi Ashta, is that the same? Are you comparing chalk to cheese? What's the connection? Possum, over there, by the case of the pieces of wood, the wood is not, so, is not a very good sealant. Is good something that seals, wood, something that seals properly? No. Eloi Morach, Lokoi, it's not going to stand. The pieces of wood, especially this wood, is like a little branch. If you stuff the, the branch that you pick from the park, it's going to fall. If you're not memorech, you don't seal it on all sides, it's simply going to fall. So even though right now it happens to still be there, it's a very flimsy, unprofessional, amateur kind of work. And therefore over there, it's not because I really have to have every millimeter covered. It's simply if I don't, uh, if I don't seal it, the whole thing's going to fall apart. That's why. But agav chetia, but if the question of Rava is if you properly closed it halfway, you properly close it halfway, and half a hole will always be stuffed forever and ever. The midi the koi koi. Yeah, the midi the koi. If you stuffed it properly with something that stands, it will stand. And therefore, Robert's question still remains a question. Robert's question still remains as follows. Technically speaking, if I stuffed it with a piece of wood, not the zmoira, I stuffed it with good material, but only halfway. But it's going to stand there strong. It's not a technical issue, it's a halachic issue. Do we say, listen, at the end of the day, I only have half a hole, and that's good enough. I don't have the entire area to go through. I don't have the, yeah, the to, to let the tumor through. On the other end, we say no. On the other end, you can say no. This is a hole still visible, which is half filled. It's like the hole is there. It happens to be foreign material in there. Yeah, but it's not really uh, uh, properly sealed. Now, back to, oh, before we continue, before we continue, before we continue, I just want to remind everybody of something we said yesterday, and if we know that, everything will be good and very um, palatable. Let me ask you a question. Let's make a question. Let's say, let's say, I tell you that on Sunday afternoon, I I swear to you, I want to impress everybody here, and I'll tell you that I flew to Cyprus in the afternoon, and I saw a magnificent castle in Cyprus, and I went on a boat, and I did very uh, fun things, and everything was just shackles. And I came back and I managed Nishba. Oh, you guys will say, oh, wow, we, we. Then the day after I come, big tears in my eyes. People, I lied to you. I just wanted to, you know, impress the guys. And I lied to all of you. So you may want not to attend Mashir anymore, possibly. But do I have to pay you Choymish? No. There's no financial uh, ratifications whatsoever. Yeah, I'm not lying to you about your money or your money or your money, right? I'm just telling you what. I'm telling you that was in Cyprus and nothing to do. I didn't say, therefore, you know, your money is mine. No. And therefore, I don't have to pay. I have to do a lot of tshuva. Very nice. Now, which means what? Sometimes, now we're going to get to a more uh, 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 fine points of the sugya. Only when there's enough kamina for money, meaning, now I have to be more specific. Only when the shvua shekel, that's the definition. Had we believed this was Shekhar, if not for him admitting the day later or later on, yeah, had we followed his false testimony and false shvua, he would be potu from money, yeah, potter from paying, then he has to pay Chomesh, otherwise, no. And sometimes you have very fine cases in which I'm swearing 
that something financial happened here, something monetary happened, but I'm not exactly getting myself off the hook with the Shavua, and therefore I don't have to pay Choymesh. Listen to the following example. Don't listen, look in the Gemara. It says over at the very bottom of Kufa Yomadal. It says over. They said in the Mishnah, We all know the box of cookies, and it cost money shekels, and someone had it in his house. And Mr. Ganev Ganavsky, he stole the box of cookies before Pesach, and now Pesach came and went, and uh, what happened then? The box of cookies, which was 20, is now worth how much? A lot of money. 0, 0.0 times 0. Now the Ganav comes with big tears and wants to return the box of cookies to the victim. What does he say? Even though it's worth 0, I return it to you and then Potter so he gets an easy deal. He can pay 0 and, and get off the hook. Rov asks the question based on that. Nishba Olov Mahu. That's a that's some question. What happens if after Pesach, Mr. Victim comes, you stole my cookies, mister. And let's say the person says, cookies, schmookies, no, no, no. I did not steal anything. I did not steal any cookies from you. And I swear in the name of God, I did not steal. What's going to be the halacha? People, you tell me. I want to stop and ask you. And then afterwards he admitted, no, he really stole it. Do you think he has to pay choymesh? On one hand, we can say there is no value. So Allah is lying and he did steal. He did, he's not really making any Allah Kamina. Beautiful answer. That that is possibly the answer. And therefore, no, if if he gives back the actual cookies, he can get away with zero. But let's say the cookies are stolen or burnt or not with him, then what? Then he'd have to pay 20 shekels. Yes, that's the question. You guys are doing amazing. Now let's eat in the words of the Gemara. There are two ways we are to look at it. Like you or like you. Beautiful. Me and Rinan, shall we say, Kaven the Imignav, if the box of cookies will be stolen from the house of the Ganav. Shimon the Ganav, somebody stole from him. What would he have to do? Buy Shlumile Mamoino. Like Yosef said, he would now have to fork 20 shekels from his own pocket, or maybe 500 shekels uh, whiskey. Yeah. It is considered what? That he did get off the hook. You know why? Because if it gets stolen tomorrow, then what? Then if I believe it's Shvua, he's off the hook. The Dayonim are sitting there. They believe it's Shvua. They say, Zero, he's a nice guy. Nothing happened. And that's not true. Because even though the box of cookies is worth zero parrots, but the Maisa, if the box of cookies will not be there to be returned, then the Ganav will have to give money. So this is Dovo Hagoyrem Lamonoin. Indirectly, money is involved here, and there's what I would call potential getting off the hook, potential tour. Yeah, because if the cookies will not be here tomorrow, he swore on Tuesday and he admitted on Thursday. Remember the days, it's easy for me. He, he swore the Shekhar on Tuesday. Thursday came with big tears and this. Let's say on Wednesday something would have happened. Somebody would have stolen it from him. Because of his shvua, doesn't have to do anything. And if not for his shvua, he would have to pay 20 shekel because he doesn't have the box of cookies to give. So maybe now he does have to give choymesh. Oy Dilma, or maybe, comes the other side like Peretz. Oy Dilma, or maybe, Hashtamias, don't look at the future, look at now. What's Hashta? Now. Hashtamias, now the end of the day, now for sure. Hamanach, now it is here in his box. Manach, it's Munach. It's here, stationary, sitting in his box in the, in the, in the kitchen. The Afra Be'almahu. It's just like dust. It's worth zero. So it's not called that he actually denied money. That's a question which Rabbi did not resolve. Rove, excuse me. Says the Gemara now. Let's, let me just define the question in one sentence. When we say that Shvua, Sheker, Mechaib Chomesh, when you want to exempt yourself with money, does it have to be money that's there now? Yeah? Or is it even potential money? That can come from that object. For example, the chometz right now is worth zero, but if the chometz would be stolen, you'd have to yes pay twenty. So he's potentially yes, yeah. There is potential payment here that he is getting off the hook from. That the prov has the question. Rabba, interesting enough, from the earlier generation, Rabba already had it simple. For Rabba, 
it was not a question, it was a statement. What Rava doesn't know, Rava did know. What did Rava say? Doma Rava. Listen to this case with many, many variations on the theme. Shoyri Gonafto. Mister, you stole my shore. Yeah, the neighbor comes in, storming in. You stole my ox, you ox uh, thief. How do you say wrestler? There's a word for it. No, those are wrestler. Shoyri Gonafto. Wrestler, wrestler, wrestler. Not wrestler. Wrestler is, I know, you know, not wrestler, wrestler. Shoyri Gonafto. Maybe he's also a wrestler, you know, it's violent. Shoyri Gonafto. Behu Oimel, Loy Gonafti. What? Me? Masanda Rosh Hashiva. I never stole anything in my life. I did not steal your ox. <clears throat> Can't you see the shore smiling at me right behind you? Oh, oy, 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 what a flashlight. <laughs> the, the claimant, the one who came knocking on the door, he sees the ox right there. What is he doing to you? Now, this guy's with egg on his face. The one who claimed the shore is not, he never stole the shore. What's going to say now? The shore just came in <laughs> saying hello to its owner. What's he doing to you? Don't worry, he has a quick answer. The liar has a quick answer. Of course, this is your shore. I never said I don't have your shore. I said I never stole it. I'm a Shomer Chinam. Don't you know that we had an agreement and I'm an ox sitter? I'm not a wrestler. I'm an ox sitter, professional, but I'm doing it for free. And that's why it's by me. So now he's lying. And then he admitted that he lied. He admitted that he stole. So now Chayev, he has to pay the owner. Wait a second, why is he Chayev? The Maisi admitted that the shore belongs to the owner. He's a good man. Listen, he lied about being a Ganev. He said, no, I'm an ox sitter. Shomer Chinam. But the Maisa, yeah, he's not denying that the ox belongs to the owner. You know why he's Chayev? Shari Potter Atzma Migneva Vaveido. He will come to a whole new world and listen to this. If a Ganev, oh, when, oh, we have to have a small introduction, which is extremely important from now till the end of the page. And let me ask you a question. Tuesday came a knock on the door, and the person said, Mr., excuse me, your shore, my shore, your shore, you know your shore, our website? My shore is by you. And then he lied, and he swore shekel, shekel. Okay, you know what happened when he swore the shekel? You know what he became? He became, you can write it on his, uh, don't do it here, but it's written in his uh, forehead, thief. Remember what we spoke about uh, months ago? Verbal thief. Sometimes to be a thief, all you have to say is say a word. Once he said, no, it's not Meshore, and he's hiding it knowingly, he's a Ganev. You guys tell me. Let's say on Thursday he admitted that the story was over. I want to ask you a question, people. You're doing very well today, everybody. Yeah? Quality, quality, not quantity. Wednesday, after he lied, and the Balabais goes, oh, I'm going to call Meshore and Raboni. I'm going to go to Basin. What's going to be? On Wednesday, there was an oiness. The animal died because something out of control happened. Absolutely out of control. And on Thursday, he admitted it was my fault. I'm, I'm a Ghanim. Does he have to return the animal? Or can we say, listen, Oynes, it's not his fault. Says the Gemara later, strictly, a Ghanim chai the Oynesi. If anything happens to the animal, anything, even the most ridiculous Oynes, you know, UFO creatures came and, and they, they came and they attacked the animal, something absolutely unpredictable, you still have to pay. Why? Ghanim! The people are Shoimer, are decent people. They are Potter from Gneva Veda, Pshia, da, da, da. Eh, not Pshia, from Chule. But a Ganev is also Chayev Oynes. Let's read again. You know, Chayev, the person who he steals verbally by swearing, has to pay Choymesh. You know why? Shari Potter Atzman Gneva Veda. Very good. Although he admits that the show belongs to him. What is he really? He's really a Ganev. What is he posed to be? He poses as a Shomer A Shomer Let's say the animal was stolen or, 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 or lost. Not his fault. Not Bepshia. The Shomer Chinam is Patu. Ah. So if on Wednesday, between Tuesday's Kfira and Thursday, end of story, if he was really a Shomer Chinam, he claims to be, and it would be Gnei Be'aveda, he'd be Patu. And now it's not true. He's a liar. He's a Ganev. He should be Chayv and Gnei Be'aveda. Ah. So he created a potential Nafkamina to get himself off the hook in case anything happens, that's why it's to pay Choymesh. That's the answer to what you said before. Let's continue. Shomer Sachar and Yolov. We continue the story, the conversation between the Ganev and the victim. He says, I'm a Shomer Sachar. You, uh, you scare me with your uh, screaming. Oh, here's my ox. Of course it's your ox. I swear to you in the name of Hashem that what? I'm a paid ox sitter. I'm getting money for that. And we had an agreement. 
And then he admitted that he lied on Thursday. Chayev, you know why he has to pay Choymesh? Because he did make a financial difference. Sharipota atzmei mishvur of a mesa, what we call oynes. Let's say the animal broke its leg and he died absolutely unexpectedly. He was an oynes. He would be potu l'shem resachor. So he claims to be with Shavua, would get him off the hook in case of oynes. But she'en can, since he's what? He is a ganev. A ganev would be chayev on oynes. So what he poses to be, as opposed to what he really is, does make a halachic difference with the money. Potentially, but the potential is there. Next case. Came to Ghana. He has very interesting stories, this Ghana. He's very creative, creative mind. He should work as an advertiser. Shoyelani Olov. I borrowed it. You're coming to me attacking? I stole it? Don't you remember that you very kindly lent me your ox to work the field, to till the earth? What do you want? Chayev. Why is he Chayev? Why does he have to pay? In Chayev Choymesh. In case that he, at the end of the day, admitted to lie, what does that mean? A shoyel, everybody knows that shoyel is chayv on everything, but it's not true. There's one case that the shoyel is potu. Let's say the animal worked very hard and he died not extremely hard within reason. He worked hard, not that he abused it or anything. He worked hard as animals work, work hard anyways, in a normal way, yeah, within within normal uh, uh, reason. And then he died, worked, worked, worked. You know, animals, I don't know if you know, animals and Lahabdil people eventually die. You know, if you're not a Leo or Novi or Serach Bas Asher, or some people would say the Lubavitch Sharat, <laughs> then what? Then you die. So a Shoyel, whose animal, Lahabdil, five of dollars died because of regular work, does not have to pay. Why? Says the Gemara, famous Gemara in Bob Metzia somewhere. The Gemara says, the Shoyel says, I borrowed it to work with. As long as it worked with it normal and it died from the regular hard work, which would have died by you also, I don't have to pay. Ah, so what do you see? Alma, that is to say, even though this guy, you know how I call him? Half liar. Even though the animal is right there and the person says, what, that's your animal. I'm not a complete liar. That's your animal. But, Kevin the Inigniv, in case it gets stolen or broken or this or that, right now things are hunky dory on Tuesday. But if he says, listen, I borrowed it and I'm not returning to you right now. I borrowed it, yeah? And, and I still want to continue the borrowing period or the Shmir period, okay? And then listen to the difference. If tomorrow on Wednesday it will be stolen, what's going to happen? The emissaries, he should pay under any circumstances as a Ghanav. But according to his declaration, that is a shoimer, he would always be potter one way or the other. So his shvua did make some kind of potential halachic difference, money difference. Now too, it's considered as if now in the present, his koifer is holding back someone else's money. Potential money is money. Now let's go back to our case of the Passover. Cookies, actually not Passover cookies, the Chomets cookies after Pesach, and the beautiful explanation given by Peretz and Yosef. Ochonami here too, first wide line, Afal Gav Da'afar Be'al Mehu, even though right now this box of cookies that experienced Pesach, and Pesach came and went, and now it is, if you look at the actual cookies, halachically, what are they? Afar Be'al they're like dirt, they're like nothing, Ah, but, 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 look at the potential. Came in the imigniv by shlumilei mamoino me'alia. Let's say that box of cookies, the day after, after he swore, those box of cookies would be stolen from the Ganav. <laughs> Good for him, yeah? Then he would have to pay cash. As, as Yosef said, he'd have to pay 20 shekels cash right now. Okay, credit card accepted. But he'd have to pay money. So that box of cookies is dovel derm le now also, it's considered as if it's money. Potential money is money. Yeah, you buy an apartment that is now worth, I don't know, uh, zero almost. No apartment is worth zero. No, very, very cheap apartment. But people tell you, no, in future, they're going to build here 10 million shekel. Yeah, potential, 10 million. I'm not saying it's to pay 10 million if you stole it. Yeah, but I'm saying potential is there. Here too, the potential value, not value, the potential chiyuv, of paying in case anything happens, he wanted to exempt himself by saying, I never stole any cookies at all, completely kfira, 
that he has to pay Choymesh, and that does, that is considered to be a real Tfira with Choymesh. Yosif Rove, or Rabba, the Ko'omer Lo Shmaitza. So Rabba sat down in the Bet Midrash, and he said that statement, we just said, what did he say? What was the statement? Oh, he said, oh, psh. He said the statement of what? He said, let's quickly revise. What did we say? He said the following statement. He said that if a person is claimed to be a Ganav and he lied, he said, I'm not a Ganav. Yeah, the animal is yours. Hey, mister, calm down. I know this is your cow. I know these are your candlesticks. Don't call me a thief. Don't you remember that I'm a Shemachinim, Shemachachar, Shoyal, grandmother? I, I have some kind of legal reason to have it with me. Yeah, yes, and then he admitted the day later that he lied through his teeth completely. He has to pay. Why does he have to pay? Because he did make a difference, right? Had we known he was a Ganev, you'd have to pay full payment, even in the case of the most unbelievable remote oiness. Now that he claims to wear the hat, false hat, of any kind of shimer, he's never hive on everything, right? He mainly, he created himself a safe haven, sort of, a, a place to run to, yeah? in order to be pottering himself, that's called real theft, verbal theft. And for that, honey, you got to pay a choymish, which is really quarter. Third wide line, kufay omud beis. Kufay omud beis, we came in a good time for a question. Eisve of Amram, Lerove, of Amram now challenged Rove from another b'risa. That b'risa seems to go against Rove. What does the b'risa say? V'kichesh bo. It says in the Parshan, V'yikra hey, V'kichesh bo that if the person denied the kachesh also in modern Hebrew, la is to deny. It's a word in modern Hebrew too. He denied having the animal or denied, no, I'm not a thief or it's not your animal. He denied something. I'm a good boy. What does it mean, kichesh? Prat lemoide ba'ikar, excluding a person who admitted the main part of the story. What does that mean? Keitza, give me an example. Shari after very, very, very similar story. Hello, Mr. Neighbor, uh, you stole my ox. I know you stole my ox. Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm not politically correct here. I'm not British. You stole my ox. Finish. That's direct. Oh, I'm a, oh, calm down, mister. Like I did not steal anything at all. I'm a nice guy. Look, <laughs> I can see the ox smiling to me right behind you, you liar, Ganev. Mativ, what is he doing by you, my ox? Look, everybody knows it's my ox. And then he tells him even taller tales. Then you know the answers are a whole galore of lies, potential lies. Either he says, you sold it to me. You sold me the ox. You say, I'm a thief, I'm not a thief. I legally bought it from you with good money. He gave it to me as a gift and he forgot. You have amnesia. Go to the psychiatrist, go to the doctor, get your pills. He gave it to me. It's a gift from you to me. Or you don't know. Your father he gave it to me or sold it to me. You don't know what your father did. Your father gave it to me or another potential. They're all lies. It's all lies. Or he told him, Achaparos rats. Yeah. Or for, he ran after my cow. You know, the ox, you know, fell in love with my cow and he ran into my place. What can he do? Yeah, it's there, natural. Me'elav ba etzli. He came to me by himself without me asking. He just came to me. Meaning, meaning, I admit it's yours. This is different to. You sold it to me. I admit it's yours. It's like, oh, it came by mistake. That can be, that can happen. Somebody steals someone's cow or someone's dog. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, he just ran by himself. He has a mind of his own. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Toya Baderch Metzosiv. Or it says, I found it, Toa in the there. It's yours. It's yours. I found it. I found it wandering, lost, you know, all forlorn in a way. So I took it. Okay, but it's yours, but I'm not a thief. Oh, here comes the story. Don't you remember? I'm an ox sitter for free. I get paid to be an ox sitter. And you gave my ox to me to sit, to sit on, <laughs> to guard, to look after. You forgot. And oh, no, I borrowed it from you. The kids are a whole, very, a whole galore of potential lies. The Nishba, he swore on any of those stories. You see the one common den denominator except for the first cases where he claims he bought it or got it to Matana, most cases that we saw, 80% of the cases here are what? He admits. 
the, the shore is yours, mister. You knocked on the door, calm down. <laughs> it's your shore, your shore, your shore. But I did not steal it. He wants to be with his hands clean. You know, and that was on Tuesday. You know what happened later? He broke the hoido. He came and he admitted, it's only because my mommy took me to Disney World. How many times a year? Only twice. Such difficult childhood. That's why I came out to be a Ganev and I stole it. I admit that I stole it. I stole it. How much does he have to pay? Oh, oh I don't know. Are you going to tell me that he'll be chayev? What, what would you say, people? If he said, I'm a Shomer Chinam, Shomer Sachar, and really was a thief, I, what did what did Robert say? He has to pay Chaimish. Why? Because the Ganev has to pay whatsoever. Shomer Sachar does not have to pay when it's Oynes, right? So he's getting himself off the hook halfway. Talmud Loimer, Vekichesh Ba, no. The Torah says, it's the exact opposite from Rava. Trat Lemoide Ba'ikar, which means no. As long as the person admitted the Iker, which means he admitted that the item belongs to the owner, even though he lies about how it came to his hands. And instead of coming clean completely and saying, I stole, instead of that, he said, I borrowed, or I'm a sitter, I'm a shamachinam, he does not have to pay choymesh. Oy vav oy, that's exactly against Rav, right? That's a question. Omer lay, oh, here we need to do a lot of politically correct explanation. Answers Rav to Rav Amram, Tedua. Tedua means either you're crazy or you're lazy, or you're not completely there. He gave him a compliment, or you have your uh, saliva running down your um, beard. In other words, he, call, he calls him a name. Rava, I think, was more superior to Rav Amram, and he felt Rav Amram was needed to be told off because he felt he was like not the, the right question to the level of Rav Amram. Yeah, and therefore he gave it to him as a rabbi. He gave it to the Talmud. Kitanya, what's the answer? Because so why is he calling you names? He's asking a stupid question. He said that, not Michal Sol. Kitanya, he, you know why the Bryce said you don't have to pay Choymesh? The Ka'omer lay Heila. Ay, 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 ay. Ki Ka'imna. When I spoke, the Ka'ima Be'ogom. Let me explain everything. That's a very, 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 very easy. And that's why I called him maybe like a Chasholm retarded. I'll tell you why. Chasholm. But that's. In the second case, the guy's completely potur. You tell me, people, what exactly was the next line? I'm asking that question. Uh, uh, question. North Korea, North Korea. Please, please, I want to. Okay, question. The question is like this, Rabbi Taifa. When the person said, This is your shore and I'm his ox sitter, what did he say next? Did he say, It's your shore, it's your shore, and take it now, take it? Or did he say, I'm a shore machine, I'm a shoyal? And the term between us is going to finish in 20 days. That's a huge difference. And that's a difference between the two Bryce's. The Bryce who said he's completely Potter is the guy who says, calm down, mister. I'm not a thief. Sounds very convincing. Also to base in. And I swear to you. And take it right away. Take it. Take it now. Yeah, the bull is, is smiling behind me. Take it this second, right? Then he's Potter. Why? Although he lied. Although he lied. And instead of admitting, I stole, he wants to save his face. That can happen a lot nowadays. You know, you don't want to steal money. So it says, ah, here's your ox, take it. What is he doing for you? Ah, uh, it came to me by mistake because he chased my cow. Yeah, or because, he didn't want to say, I, I stole. She uh, him. You know, he wants to say, I stole. Lamai said, that is not Mechaev Choymesh. That's like me telling you a tall tale that on Sunday afternoon, I went to Cyprus and went on a helicopter and I went to a castle of a king. It's a, it's a lie, but it's not enough to mean all the money. Take it right now. I'm not asking for money at all, right? Mashain Ken, the story of Rava, the Kaima Be'agom, the animal, as they're talking, is now actually went already to the meadow, to the grazing area, and the person tells him, oh, I'm a borrower, I'm a Shomachina, my grandma gave it to the da 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 told tales, but I'm not giving it to you right now. No, I, I'm a borrower, and our agreement is still on. Oh, so now you made a logic difference. Why? According to your version that you're, let's say, Shomer Sachar, if anything happens to it between now and two weeks' time, when the store will be over, you'd be potu from Oynes, right? But really, you're Ganev. And it's a Ganev, you chayv the Oynes. Ah, potential getting off the hook? 
of what may happen is also considered a financial lie, a, a verbal theft, and you have to pay for it. That's the answer. Why Robert gets very excited over here. Break the Gemara on that. At the, we quote now one of the first cases of, of the many, many possible lies that the Shakran, who swears the Shaker lied. Break the Gemara at the Mechal Toyli. In the case, right, when he said, You sold it to me. Break the Gemara, my Moide Beikar Ika. Why do you call it Moide Beikar? What does Moide Beikar mean? Moide Beikar means I admit the animal is yours. And it's by me, but I have a very elegant way to explain why it's by me. It came to me, it ran to me, it happened, you know, I'm a shoimer, I'm a sitter, I'm a thingy, a baba. But Lamaisa here, if he said, I bought it, then he's a complete liar. I bought it and it's mine. Last time I checked, when you buy something, it's yours. So why do you, that's not half a lie. The whole vort of this brisa is half a liar. But the guy says, this is mine, it's going to stay by me, then that, that's a whole lie. Mamish, I'm not a Ghanav, and I'm a legal owner, and, and get away from my house. Says the Gemara, Lo, it's Richa. There is a case. So Omer Lay, he told him, I bought it from you. Lo, nostati lecha, domi. Oh, I did not yet give you the money. I did Kenyan Meshicha. I did the formal Kenyan of a point of no return, but he didn't yet pay you the, the debt. I didn't yet pay you the, he, he's a nice guy who wants to get rid of that stolen sword. Ah, I didn't yet give you the money. Shokil Torah Chovazil. Take your ox and go. Okay, I'm canceling the deal. He wants. He's a very elegant liar. There was a deal between us, but the deal fell through. Oh, okay, deal cancel, cancel deal out. Take back your shore. Ah, he just said take back your shore. That's half a liar. He's giving you shore right away, but he's not admit that he actually stole. Same question. That's very nice when we talk about buying, because when you buy, you gotta pay. But in the second case of the Braisa, he says, you gave it to me as a gift. Or your father gifted me that shore. How can he say Moide Be'ikar? Why? He says, it's my shore. I got it from you or from your father as a gift. And it's mine, right? Because there's no money. They can say deal canceled. There's no deal by Matona. There's a Gemara like this. The Omalei, he told him like this. You know why you gave me a gift? Everybody here knows, I think you're mature enough to know that one of the most expensive things is when somebody gives you a gift for free. When somebody does you a favor repeatedly, it's very expensive because then you are indebted to him. You know, it's called in Hebrew, it's called asir toda. You know that asir toda, a prisoner of thanks. That's what's called in modern Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. You say it also in a positive way. asir toda lecha. I'm imprisoned to you through my thank you. You do favors to me all the time. Now, that's your relationship with Hashem. So that gift was not a very clean gift. Look at the story. You gave me, or your pup gave me, your father gave me the gift in order that I'll make you naich nafsho. I'll do something nice for you. I will, I'll talk to uh, the mayor for you to build you a shul. That's very, very hard in the city. Yeah, I'll do something for you in return of the gift. It's a gift, but mm, I'm expecting some nice, how do you say it in English? Some other favor. There's a, uh, Subtext going on over here. And I didn't do it. At the end, I didn't speak to her about the shul. If so, I'm a super honest guy. Uh, I got the gift with the idea of doing a favor. I didn't do the favor. Take your bull and go away. Uh -huh. Okay. In other words, again, all these cases are one case, really. What is it? The person lied about being a Ghanav and did not admit it was a Ghanav, but he's now right away willing in this at instant second, take it back. If so, his, his shvua did not make any financial difference because he's right this second telling you, take it back. Mimela, there is no nafkamina la, la money and he doesn't have to pay choymesh. Practic more about another case. Toya baderch mitzosiv, one of the cases is what? I found it on the way. I find it, I found it somewhere and now it's by me. What? That is, practic more lema, he should have told him, the, the, the plaintiff, you should have returned it to me. Says Rashi, If you found someone's item, you take it home and not give it to him, well, that's theft. So then he admitted to be a thief. What's in Ishba? Then he's, he, he admits to be bad. To, no, I didn't take it from your house. Let's say I found Yitzhak's uh, hat. Very nice, elegant hat that you're wearing, the casket. And I find it in the street and I know it's yours and I take it home. That's theft. So he's not even getting off the hook. What's the story? 
Omer Avua de Shmuel says Avua de Shmuel, no. The Omer, you know what he swore about? Shvua, I swear to you, Aveda Matsosi, I found the lost objects. I didn't know it was yours. I had no idea it's yours. I did not recognize your cap to be yours. It's a mess. It's a corona mess. They all look the same. I had no idea it's your mess. And Mimela, what? And he lied. <laughs> he lied. He did know. He did know. Because he lied. So now, why doesn't he have to pay Chaimesh? Because he's willing to give it back right away. But his tall tale was, I found it, and I had no idea it's yours. And then on Thursday, he admitted with big tears, I did know it's yours. And I actually stole it from you. Okay? So then, Lamaisa we say there's no difference because he's willing to give it to him right away, if that's the case. Before we continue to the next piece, which is connected yet not connected, I have to give you a small but very important introduction. There are all types of false uh, shvuas in the Torah. I gave the funny story, let's say a person, you should know, tell your children, if you have younger children who are raised in Israeli, uh, Israeli uh, mentality society, Isra unfortunately, Kids tend to say, nishbalecha, nishbalecha. I swear to you that so and so happened. Even by from children, it's wrong. You should educate them not to say it. And I'm allowed to say, I swear, even though it's not Shem Hashem. So let's say a kid tells you, I swear to you that uh, I went to school on time today, <coughs> right? So then it's a lie. No money is involved. You know, he needs his own kapora. What happens if someone tells you, I swear to you that those candlesticks I never stole and I'm not giving them back to you? He has to pay Chomish. He's not giving back the, he lied. He admitted he has to pay Chomish. What kind of corpus does he have to bring? Chomish ve? Ashon, very nice. It's one of the five slash six Ashon Sadar. What happens, a completely different story now. What happens when a person is invited to base in, summoned to base in, let's not talk about Goyshe courts now. The person, knows the, who the person or the claim and the one who claims the plaintiff, the trivea, knows or claims that someone stole from him. Those candlesticks are by the neighbor. And he says, hey, wait a second. The other neighbor, Levi, he saw. Yeah, he saw me giving the candlesticks to Reuven. Oh, great. Or to Shimon. I'll call Levi to come to Basin and testify. And Levi says, no, I didn't see anything. And Levi lies through his teeth. I guess the one who stole the candlesticks is... Uh, uh, Gavra, he's a scary guy. Levi is chickening out, and Levi says, oh, I'm not going to testify. Can you swear to me? Says the Tova, not to the other uh, party, not to the other litigant, but to the Ed, to the potential witness. Can you swear to me that you don't know Edus, that you did not witness anything, that you can't testify? I swear in the name of Hashem, open Sefer Torah. Oh, and he lied. Then he admitted that he lied, and he did see stuff going on. Then he also doesn't pay anything. He has to give a different korban called chatas oil of Yeah, everybody knows that there are like, yeah, a few cases in the Torah, also in Vayikra hey, in which a person brings the chatas according to his financial abilities, right? Either the kevis or the or the birds or the soilus. Yeah. Okay. So now we're talking about a different case. A person is now addressing a potential aid, aid Ein Dalid, to come to his aid. I'm not trying to be funny, no pun intended, yeah. A I D. Please aid me and be made. And the aid lied. And he said, no, I saw nothing, saw nothing, heard nothing, like the monkey. No, no, nothing. And he lied. So now he has to give Corbin Chatos. Did you notice that up until now I spoke about one aid? Rabbi Taichtal, I thought there was only two aid him are valuable in Allah, not one aid. You people tell me, can one aid do something in Beisdin? Is there, if one aid comes to Beisdin and testifies, so-and-so stole, does that make any difference? What? Something else starts with the shin. Shvua. Eid echad, there are a few things you can do. One of the things is mechaev shvua. That's the oraisa. An eid echad cannot, but upon the testimony of one eid, yeah, you cannot actually take money out of the other party. One eid, not two. Apishnaim eidim yakum dover, lakum eid echad bish, v'chol mishpat, v'chule v'chule. But he can make the other person force him to take shvua, which means the person who claims no candlesticks in my house at all. He's a complete chakra, complete liar. He's not even the elegant one. No candlesticks, no neighbor, I don't know you. He's a complete liar. Now comes the other neighbor and says, I saw Reuben depositing the candlesticks in your house before he went to Cyprus on that trip, yeah? 
then because there's a shvua of one aid, you can force the one lying, which we know lie, to take shvua. And some people, let's say, didn't yet take shvua. Let's say didn't. Let's say the liar is still not as bad as we as we assume is. He's saying, I did not, I did not have it. Many, many people would lie, but they wouldn't swear. Shvua shekel, that's a much more, much redder lie. We all know it's through Eden. Unfortunately, certain Averas, people, a oh, gray area around the corners. Because it's not from enough, <laughs> it's really kosher because it's from Banuta, uh, whatever, Cyprus, whatever. But people are scared of. So that's a deterrent. So therefore, an Eid Echod does make a difference. An Eid Echod testifies against what you claim. You, Mr. I have no candlesticks, you'll have to be Nishba. And many people, and if you don't take the Shwa, you gotta pay. Ah, you gotta give it back. Because there's no other way. Because you don't swear. Why don't you want to swear? If you know a million percent, you are. Oh, so one aid does something, but not everything. That's the status of one aid. It's like halfway there. Now we can start the sugi, although we don't have much time. We'll just start to read. And I think tomorrow we'll start properly. Today, that will be like the precepts. Tanya, Omar ben Azai. Says ben Azai, regarding the shvua of the potential witness. Gimel shvua sent. There are three different cases of a shvua. Now, let me tell you, let's say B, let's say the case here is as follows. It's a lot of introduction. Reuben claims to Shimon, Shimon, you found my ox, you took it, you found it, and you took it to your house knowingly without giving back to me. I highly suspect that that's the story, but I have no idea. Then, you know, the real, really story, the real story was, we are behind the scenes in the movie. We know what's going on. Really, it's true. Shimon found the ox of Reuven, took it knowingly. <laughs> come, 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 quickly, come, come, cutie, come to my herd. I'll treat you nicely. Stole it. And you know who saw it? Levi. Levi saw the whole thing happening. Reuven is claiming against Shimon. Shimon is lying through his teeth, one way or another. Shimon has all kinds of uh, creative lies, as we'll see tomorrow. And Reuven wants to take him to Beisdin and says, Levi, you come testify. I think you, Levi, you saw the whole thing happening. And Levi is lying. Reuben is facing two liars. Yeah? Shimon who says, I never took it and he really did. Levi who says, I never saw anything and really he did. So now that's the case. We're going to see Mertz Hashem in the morrow. Thank you very, very much. And I'm going to give you all invitations right now. The big event next week. Yoy Mashas. Thank you.